हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द होमियो सोल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द जॉइंट्स ऑफ द अपर लिम सो व्हाट आर द जॉइंट्स द जॉइंट्स आर द साइड वेयर टू और अ मोर बोन्स और अ कार्टिलेज आर्टिकुलेट्स द फ्री मूवमेंट्स आर ऑकर एट द साइनोवियल जॉइंट शोल्डर जॉइंट इज द मोस्ट फ्रीली मूवेबल और अ मोबाइल जॉइंट इन अवर बॉडी वॉट इज द शोल्डर गर्डल so it connects the upper limb to the axial skeleton it consists of the clavicle and the scapula so we will going to study each joint each and every joint in a detail the first joint is the sternoclavicular joint so it is the synovial type of a joint and bones that take part in the sternoclavicular joint are median end of a clavicle the clavicular notch of a manubrium sterni and the cartilage the upper surface of the first costal cartilage it is a complex joint and it is classified as the saddle joint saddle joint because of the concave convex shape of the articular surface then the ligaments of the sternoclavicular joint are capsular ligament interclavicular ligament costoclavicular ligament the blood supply of the sternoclavicular joint is internal thoracic and the suprascapular artery now supply the medial supraclavicular now movements that takes part in the sternoclavicular joint are elevation depression protraction retraction anterior and the posterior rotation of the clavicle it is utilized in the overhead movement of the shoulder girdle so this is all about the sternoclavicular joint then our next joint is the acromioclavicular joint acromioclavicular joint is a plain synovial type of a joint and bones that takes part in this joint are at the lateral end of a clavicle on the medial margin of the acromion process of the scapula ligaments of the acromioclavicular joint are coraco clavicular ligament it consists of the two parts the conoid part and the trapezoid part the conoid part is attached below the root of the coracoid process just lateral to the scapular notch and the trapezoid are attached below the upper surface of the coracoid process above the trapezoid line on the inferior surface of a lateral part of the clavicle then the blood supply suprascapular and the thoraco acromion artery now supply lateral supraclavicular now movements are movement of the they are also the movement of the shoulder girdle that is the elevation of the scapula depression protraction of the scapula that is pushing and punching movement retraction of the scapula that is squaring the shoulder then lateral or a forward rotation of the scapula the medial or a backward rotation ligaments of the scapula are coracoacromion ligament supra scapular ligament and the spinoglenoid ligament so here it is all about the acromioclavicular joint then our next joint is a shoulder joint shoulder joint is a synovial joint of a ball and a socket variety articular surface are glenoid cavity of the scapula and the head of the humerus it is called a glenohumeral articulation stability of this joint is maintained by coracoacromion arch or a secondary socket of a head of a humerus the musculo tendinous cuff of a shoulder and the glenoid labrum ligaments of the shoulder joint are capsular ligament which is loose and permit the free movement the area between the superior and a middle glenohumeral ligament it is a point of a weakness in the capsule this is called as the foramen of a wet bridge it which is a common site uh, for the anterior dislocation of the humeral head then the coracohumeral ligament the transverse humeral ligament glenoid labrum the bursas that related to the shoulder joint are subacromion bursa or a subdeltoid bursa subscapularis bursa and the infraspinatus bursa
then uh, the relations of the shoulder joint are superiorly coracoacromial arch supraacromial bursa supraspinatus and the deltoid inferiorly it is related to long head of the bicep uh, tr sorry tricep trachea axillary nerve and the posterior circumflex humeral artery anteriorly shoulder joint is related to subscapularis coracobrachialis short head of the bicep brachii and the deltoid posteriorly it is related to infraspinatus teres minor and the deltoid within the joint the tendon of the long head of the bicep brachii then the blood supply of the shoulder joint is anterior circumflex humeral artery posterior circumflex humeral artery suprascapular vessels and the subscapular vessels then nerve supply axillary nerve musculocutaneous nerve and the suprascapular nerve then the movements of the shoulder joint are flexion and the extension abduction and the adduction medial and the lateral rotation and the circumduction clinical anatomy about the shoulder joint the dislocation is more prone to the uh, to the dislocation due to the laxity of the capsule and disproportionate area of the articular surface shoulder tip pain it is the irritation of the peritoneal underlining of the diaphragm from any surrounding pathology that causes the referred pain in the shoulder joint then the frozen shoulder the two layer of the synovial membrane becomes adherent to each other so this is all about the shoulder joint then our next joint is the elbow joint so elbow joint is the hinge variety of a synovial joint the articular surface of the elbow joint is on upper side capitulum and trochlea of a humerus on the lower side upper surface of the head of a radius it articulates with the capitulum then the trochlear notch of the ulna that articulates with the trochlea of the humerus the ligaments of the elbow joint are capsular ligament the ulnar collateral ligament radial collateral ligament or a lateral ligament which is a fan shaped band then uh the blood supply of the elbow joint is from anastomosis around the elbow joint the anastomosis around the joint uh, supplies the whole elbow joint then nerve supply of the elbow joint is ulnar nerve median nerve radial nerve the musculocutaneous nerve through its branch to the brachialis uh, relations of the elbow joint are anteriorly it is related to the brachialis median nerve brachial artery and the tendon of the bicep brachii posteriorly it is related to the tricep brachii and the ancunius medially it is related to the ulnar nerve the flexor carpi ulnaris and the common flexors and laterally uh, elbow joint is related to the supinator extensor carpi radialis brevis and the other common extensor then the movements of the elbow joint are the flexion flexion is done by the muscles brachialis bicep brachii and brachioradialis and extension by the tricep brachii and the ancunius so uh, then what is the carrying angle so the transverse axis of elbow joint it is directed medially and a downward because of this the extended forearm is not in a straight line with the arm but make an angle of about 13 degree with it so it is the carrying angle the factors responsible for the carrying angle are medial flange of a trochlea it is 6 mm deeper than the lateral flange the superior articular surface of the coronoid process of ulna is placed oblique to the long axis of the bone then the clinical anatomy of the elbow joint is distension of the elbow by the effusion that occur posteriorly dislocation of the elbow is usually posteriorly and it is often associated with the fracture of a coronoid process 
subluxation of the head of a radius which is called as the pull elbow then the tennis elbow it is the abrupt pronation with the fully extended elbow may leading to the pain and a tenderness over the lateral epicondyle which gives attachment to the common extensor origin then what is the students or the minors elbow it is characteristic by uh, effusion into the bursa over the subcutaneous posterior surface of a olecranon process then the golfer's joint is micro trauma of the medial epicondyle of a humerus occur common in the golf player if carrying angle is more the condition is a cubitus vulgus ulnar nerve make it stretched leading to the weakness of the intrinsic muscle of a hand if angle is less it is a cubitus varus if the carrying angle is less then it is called as the cubitus varus so this is all about the elbow joint then our next joint is the radio ulnar joint so the radius and the ulna join to each other at the superior and the inferior radio ulna joint they are also connected by a interosseous membrane which constitute the middle radio ulnar joint what is the interosseous membrane so the interosseous membrane connects the shaft of the radius and the ulna and it is attached to the interosseous border of the bone then the functions are it binds the radius to the ulna uh, to ulna that is each other it binds to each other then provide attachment to the muscles and it transmit the force applied to a radius to the ulna so this is all about the interosseous membrane then what is the supination and the pronation so they are the rotatory movements of the forearm or hand around the vertical axis in a semi flexed elbow the palm is turned upward in a supination and downward in a pronation the pronation is brought about chiefly by the pronator cord pronator quadratus muscle and supinator is brought about by the supinator muscles and the bicep brachii so this is all about the elbow joint the carrying angle uh the uh, the interosseous membrane uh then the supination and a pronation uh, uh movements uh and about the radio ulnar joint then our next joint is the wrist or a radio carpal joint so the wrist or a radio carpal joint is a synovial joint of a ellipsoid variety the articular surface of the wrist joint or a radio carpal joint are on the upper side the inferior surface of a lower end of a radius the articular disc of inferior radio ulnar joint on the lower side the scaphoid uh, lunate and a triquetral bone then the ligaments of the wrist joint are articular capsule that is surrounds the joint uh, on the palmar aspect there are two palmar carpal ligaments and these are palmar radio carpal ligament palmar ulno carpal ligament and on the dorsal aspect of a joint one dorso radial ligament the radial collateral ligament ulnar collateral ligament then blood supply blood supply by the anterior and the posterior carpal arches and the nerve supply is uh, anterior and a posterior interosseous nerve then the relations of the wrist joint are anteriorly it is related to the long flexor tendons with their synovial sheath and the median nerve posteriorly it is related to the extensor tendon of the wrist and a fingers with their synovial sheath and on the lateral side by the radial artery then the movements of the wrist joint are flexion extension abduction that is the radial deviation and the adduction which is the ulnar deviation circumduction then the clinical anatomy of the wrist joint are wrist joint and the interphalangeal joint commonly involved in a rheumatoid arthritis this may be the mcq then the back of the wrist is the 
common site for the ganglion so this is all about the wrist joint now we will going to learn in a detail about the joints of the hands so the first joint of the hand we will going to learn is first carpo metacarpal joint the type is saddle variety of a synovial joint articular surface are distal surface of the trapezium the proximal surface of the base of the first metacarpal bone ligaments are capsular ligament that surrounds the joint lateral ligament anterior ligament posterior ligament the blood supply is radial vessels that supply to the synovial membrane and the capsule of a joint nerve supply first digital branch of a median nerve that supplies the capsule of a joint movements of the first carpometacarpal joint are flexion extension abduction adduction and opposition clinical anatomy is first carpometacarpal joint that can undergoes the degenerative changes with the age which is a painful condition the synovial lining of a tendon of a extensor pollicis brevis and a abductor pollicis longus it can get inflamed due to the repetitive strain and can leading to the tenosynovitis so this is all about the first carpo metacarpal joint then the next joint is the metacarpo phalangeal joint so it is the synovial joint of a ellipsoid variety ligaments are capsular ligament the palmar ligament medial and the lateral collateral ligament then the movements are flexion extension abduction and adduction movement at second to fifth joint are flexion extension abduction adduction and circumduction then the next joint is the interphalangeal joint uh, so it is the hinge variety of a synovial joint and the ligaments of the interphalangeal joint are one fibrocartilaginous ligament and the two collateral bands the movements at the interphalangeal joint of a thumb is by the flexion and the extension movements at the second to fifth digit are flexion and the extension so here it is end uh, so it is all all about the joints of the upper limb uh, we had covered it here thank you so much for watching and listening the video carefully if you like my work please do not forget to subscribe the channel and also hit that bell icon to get you know, further notifications like comment and share to your friends more and more thank you so much